We ready? Yes. <laughs> yes, we ready. Hey, y'all. <laughs> we back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> we do greet you in the name that is a higher than any other name. Glory to God. That name is Jesus tonight. Yeah, it is. And we want to welcome you into the virtual sanctuary of Berean Family Worship Center, where I am, Dr. Joyce Linden, Pernell Henderson. What's your name? Walter Henderson the Third. That's us. That Hallelujah. Come on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give a few announcements um, for the uh, folks that are part of this ministry. And uh, then I'm going to go right into prayer and we're going to go right into this group study. I want to um, get you right now, if you have not already gone out to our website, which is BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org, you can get the group study uh, that we pastor's going to be teaching on in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. If you go to the um, page that says Inspirational Corner, mm -hmm. and you should be able to click right in there and get the uh, study notes. That way you can follow along with us and make sure that he's staying on course. Amen? Absolutely. Amen. So go on and get your pencil, your paper, and whatever you're going to write with, and uh, get yourself seated so that we can go right into the Word right after these uh, few announcements. Just in the way of a, a reminder, this coming Sunday, we will be celebrating uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we're also going to be serving communion, and that will be virtual um, uh, communion. And so come with your communion ready that we can then together uh, partake of the communion uh, together. And then also tomorrow as well as Friday morning, so Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., we have prayer um, for one hour. And I will give you now that uh, call line number, which is 701-801-1211. Again, the dial-in number for the 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. prayer is 701-801-1211. And then the access code is 486-979-364. Again, 486-979-364. And then you need to hit pound behind that. That'll get you into the uh, call that we will begin promptly tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And we will have a, one prayer focus, and that is for our medical and health care providers, law enforcement, and those that are part of the military. So if you would come with your, your word and your scripture, because that's exactly who we're going to be praying for. And again, that is for our medical and health care, as well as those that are part of law enforcement and then those that would be part of the military. So no matter where you're uh, uh, tuning in from, uh, you can pray for those that are part of your military, but we're gonna be praying for the US military, and you can pray for your first responders as well, uh, meaning those in healthcare as well as your law enforcement. Um, let's go right into now, into the, the word that I uh, wanna read first, and then we're gonna pray this word back to the Lord. Because we found that he hears his word and he honors his word. Proverbs 18 and verse, I believe just one verse, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to give you one other scripture. Proverbs 18, verse 10. And it just simply says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Somebody say strong tower. Strong That's tower. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Strong tower mm -hmm. that the righteous can run into and find safety mm -hmm. amen amen and so no matter what it looks like what's going on we as the righteous have some confidence tonight Hallelujah. that if we run into the name of the lord yes it is a strong tower thank you Lord. and we can have and find safety there praise amen. God. hallelujah psalm 62 verse 8 says something very similar to that it says trust in him all at all times you people Pour out your heart before him. Why? Because God is a refuge 
for you and I. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's enough right there to just go on and lay in the middle of the floor and just say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come Hallelujah. on, let's pray. Praise Father, God. we just thank you that thank your you word God. is already declared Hallelujah. that the name of the Lord yes. is, a strong, is a strong tower. Not the name of any other man, not the name of any other sickness or disease, mm -hmm. but the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. It is a strong tower. Yes. Glory to God and us the righteous. We can run into your name, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And we can find safety. We can find help. Yes. We can find deliverance. Hallelujah. We can find salvation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Some trust in horses. Mm -hmm. Some trust in chariots. Mm -hmm. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because your you, name Father. is a great tower. You, Hallelujah. Lord, it is the same name that the righteous can run into mm -hmm. and find a refuge for their souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God. we as your people, we trust in you tonight. Yes, we Hallelujah. Do, we found your name to be Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You are our provider. Mm -hmm. Everything that we stand in need of tonight. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. You said you sent your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we will have everything sufficiently and that more abundantly. Glory to God Amen. tonight. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are And God. you are Jehovah Rapha tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You heal us from all disease. Yes, you do, You God. said in Psalms 107, 20, you sent your word. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. To heal. Mm -hmm. So right now, God, we receive your word. Mm -hmm. And we walk out your, your word concerning healing, mm -hmm. restoration, and wholeness. Mm -hmm. Nothing broken. Nothing missing concerning every one of us mm -hmm. that is on this live Facebook stream. Yes, so God. we say even now, we speak the sickness. Yeah. And we say in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. you must bow your knee because God, God, you've given us the Thank authority you, to use the name of yes, Jesus. God. And that name Praise. is higher than any situation. Mm -hmm. It's higher than any disease. So whatever the name is, it must bow. Now, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And God, we say thank you. Thank you we God. give you praise. Give you praise we give God. you admiration. Mm -hmm. And we exhort your name as being higher mm -hmm. than every circumstance. Thank and you, we Lord. thank you in no other name but your son, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank Glory you. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I said his name is a strong tower, Pastor. I thought that's what you Hallelujah. said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thought that's what you said. Uh, we run into the name tonight. Yes, Glory God. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ready? I'm ready. Praise God. You on. God bless you. Uh, good evening to each of you. So glad to see you. I shouldn't say that. I keep saying that. Pray God. So you can glad. see him? <laughs> I do. In my heart, I see you. Glory to God. We bless the Lord for you. Pray your day has been an awesome day. Praise yes. God. And time with the Lord spent with him is always wonderful. Praise God. No time in the presence of the Lord is ever wasted. Come on here. So we're starting tonight. We're just continuing where we left off. And uh, 1 John 2 and verse 20 uh with where we'll start, First John 2 and 20. If you have your Bibles, look on with me there. Uh, beginning at the 20 verse said, But ye have an unction oui. from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the, the truth. truth. Praise Glory God. Glory to God. Who is a liar, mm. but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist, that denied the Father and, and the Son. Mm -hmm. Whosoever denied the Son, the same had not the Father, but he that acknowledged the Son had the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning, if that which you have heard from the beginning mm. shall remain I'm sorry, remain in you. You also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Down at verse 25. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which oh, you have received glory, of glory. him abided in you. Mm -hmm. And you need not that any man teach you. Yes, come on. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence Glory. and not be ashamed before him at his coming. 
If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is yes. born of him. Cool. Praise God. In our lesson tonight, praise God, we're going to be talking about uh, concerning them that seduce you. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll continue from last. This is actually uh, our fourth teaching in this particular book of John. And uh, we're taking our time going through here. There's so much in here. I'm trying to cover as much as I can, but we want to get everything we can concerning this. So first of all, on your sheets, if you have those, number one, but you have received an unction, verses 20 to 21. And the question is, what did John mean by the word unction? And also, what do you think John meant by his statement, and ye know all things. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, unction there is the Greek word charisma, and it means a smearing or an anointing set aside for a particular office. Now, you know, under the law that when a king or when there was a pri uh, the priest, when there was a king or some office, then he would bring the oil and smear it all over them. And that was anointing them officially doing it as for God, that this person was appointed or anointed for that office. The priest had that authority, praise God, that when the person was selected, that they would anoint them, praise God, for that office. And so here John said that we have an unction. unction. Now you're going to find in another verse, I believe it's verse 27, it's going to say anointing. But in the Greek, the word is the same and just using the same. So it's very important we understand that it's a smearing, an anointing, a setting aside of the particular office. And then it says the, the Holy One. It's very important, Luke 4, 34, to, uh, that demons call Jesus the Holy One. Yeah, yeah. Acts 3, 14, Peter at the gate of the temple called beautiful, call Jesus the Holy One. Amen? And then he said, and you know all things. <laughs> he didn't mean that, that you know everything that there is to know about salvation. That's right. He, he simply mean that the context is knowing whether something is of the Spirit of God. Amen? The Holy Ghost is there. And if you would, uh, as a register, the Holy Ghost is there to quicken you. The Holy Ghost is there to let you know, praise God, whether, amen, something is out of line with God's mm -hmm. word. You might not know what it should be, but the Holy Ghost is there. Praise God. First John 2 and 5 said, uh, praise God. I'm sorry, uh, John 8, 31 to 32 said, Then shall Jesus, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, Lord. then are you my disciples yeah. indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, it's very interesting to say, if you continue in my word, if is a condition. If you and I are not going to obey the leading of the Holy Ghost, then you need to understand something. You're not going to know the truth. That's right. The moment that you decide, I know what God said, but I, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> By default, you chose darkness. And you are open to be seduced. You're open to be misled by demonic presence. Amen. Now remember the Bible said they come as an angel mm -hmm. of light. Amen. So uh, you're going to be convinced is God speaking to you. Well, the Lord said to me, amen. But see, you can't get this unless you're willing to allow the Holy Ghost. So someone coming to try to mislead you concerning Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost going to be bump. He's going to put something on that. Praise God. Red flag. Because he's there to glorify Jesus. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. And so that's what he means by you know all things. The Holy Ghost. You have an unction. The Holy Ghost is there to guide you, to keep you from being misled. But if you're used to overriding the Holy Ghost a lot, Come praise on. God, then you might not be as sensitive to what the Spirit is saying to you. The Holy Ghost doesn't scream. Come on. He's very <laughs> quiet. He speaks and amen. Praise God. And so you and I need to listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. So it's very important. First John 2 and 5 said that we have it of the Holy One. And so that's what is going to be important. So I, again, praise God. Feel free to send some of yourself over. Let me know what you got out of that. <laughs> I love to know what you got as well. Praise God. Well, let's go on to verse 22 to 23. Who is a liar? Well, there are three false doctrines of the day. Three false doctrines of the day. Number one, that Jesus is not the Christ. The Christ means the anointed one or the Messiah who was to come. And so 
many other different religions, one of the things they're going to do is try to get you to know, well, Jesus was a good prophet. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus was a good man, you know, but he didn't have the last word or Jesus didn't win the final word. We have heard from an angel. We heard this, but amen. No, uh, Jesus was the promised Messiah within the Jewish faith. They don't, they're still looking for the Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus is him. Oui. Amen. So the, their street teaching, Jesus is not the Christ. Number two, that God is not the father of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because they said Jesus was just a regular man. Yes, a regular man. Amen. Or he was created a certain time. When he was born, that was it. He came from a natural father and a natural mother. Well, that's Antichrist. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise God. And so you and I need to know that Jesus is, praise God. <laughs> God, that Jesus is not, you know, uh, God is not Jesus' father. Number three, that Jesus is not the son of God. They'll say he is a son of God, but he is not the son son of God. And so, praise God, when when people are talking to you about that, one of the first things you want to know is who they are saying Jesus is. Mm -hmm. Because you need to understand that our gospel is predicated upon Jesus. Come on, come on. And if Jesus didn't die on the cross, our sins are still on Yes, come on. If he didn't (laughs) raise from the dead, then we have no hope, Paul said. Come on. Praise God. (laughs) And so it's important that you understand who Jesus is, the Christ is. Amen. It's a lot of teaching, a lot of theology, a lot of stuff going on. But let's start with what Jesus did at that cross. Amen. Because if that's not it, and we got to know who Jesus is. Mm. Praise God. That's important. And then um, those who believe this denies that Jesus is God who came in the flesh, that God the Father then is a liar. Because God the Father said he was his son. Yeah, yeah. And because he, it is he who testifies that Jesus is his son. Mm-hmm. First John 5 and 9, the Father said that, uh, Jesus said that the Father, it's not enough for me to give my own testimony. The Father testifies of me. Lord. John 8 and 18 said the same identical thing. So if they're telling you that Jesus is not the son of God, not only are they telling you that, that Jesus is not the Christ, but they believe the Father is a liar too. And so it's very important you and I understand that God does uh, bags it up. The Father bags it up. He testified. Even when Jesus was baptized, if you remember that, uh, the Bible, uh, the word of God came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Praise God. Not pleased a little bit. Glory, glory. He's well pleased. Hallelujah. <laughs> And so you and I have to determine that we're going to believe the word of God. There's a lot of teaching and a lot of folks out there on the internet getting a lot of stuff, believing this. But listen to me. You need to get back into the word of God. Let God be true. Every other man is a liar. When someone tells me something that's contrary to God's word, then that conversation is over. Because I believe God over every word. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what I'm doing is saying, well, I don't believe uh, that God. Well, maybe God meant this. Well, I don't know it was this. Here's the problem. If you can't believe one part of that Bible, you you can't believe any of it. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. And that's why we have to study the word. Praise God. How can you have confidence in the word when you find some parts that you don't agree with? Amen. So I'm going to let God be true. And when another man comes, he can come with his science, he can come with whatever. Let God be true. Amen. And every other man is a liar to me. Praise oh, God. Anyone oh. that you're willing to uh, believe contrary to what God's word said, then that's an idol to you. You just place them over God. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be very, very important. Let's continue. They deny that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. Jesus said he would sit at the Father's right hand. Matthew uh, 26 and 64. In fact, let's go and look at some of these scriptures I've been talking about. I'm getting excited about all of this. <laughs> Praise God. But I want to go and look at some of these scriptures that I've been talking about. Amen. Now, first of all, I want you to see something here. When we talk about 1 John 5 and 9 and, and uh, John 18, we're, we have already declared that this tells about who Jesus is. But also, Paul said, that Jesus was sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. That's Romans 8, 34. Praise God. And so I agree with that, that he is sitting at the right hand of oh God, God, making intercession for us. What right do you now. believe? Right Praise now. God. He's there. 
sitting at the right hand. So now if Jesus is not the son of God, I don't know why he's sitting at the right hand of God. <laughs> Praise God. If Jesus died and he didn't go back to heaven, then who's sitting at the right hand of God? Amen. Praise God. If we said that it's only one God, then who is that Jesus uh, sitting at the right hand talking to? I just need to know. And then we have the Holy Ghost here on earth. Paul said God raised him from the dead Glory. and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly place. Ephesians 1 and 20. Praise God. Paul said that the Father spoke to Jesus saying, sit on my right hand and I will make thy enemies my footstool. So now who is God the Father talking about? We need to know that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. He is the Messiah. Yeah. Anyone who comes to you and says, Jesus is just a good prophet, or he was just a regular man, and uh, you can become a God like him, uh, all of this foolishness, you start with Jesus. Yes, Amen. Praise on. God. And if you keep Jesus in his proper place, understand who Jesus is, you can rebuke any of this, and you and I need to know it. In denying that Jesus is the Christ, they deny the trifold nature of God which is the Trinity, mm -hmm. God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy spirit. Now you and I saw it when Jesus was baptized, that a voice came from heaven. Praise God. Holy spirit descended on him like a dove. Mm -hmm. And there was Jesus standing right there. Oh. Hallelujah oh. to God. I mean, we can't deny that. Praise God that we read you now, gave you the scripture references that said that Jesus is at the right hand of God, the father, mm -hmm. but the Holy spirit was sent back by God, the father and Jesus and now, if you're born again, he dwells Glory, in you. Praise on. God. So I'm telling you right now, they can't deny the son of the living God. Amen? Now, let's go to verse 24 through 25. Praise God. You got your lesson plan? I can. Okay, get your lesson plan. Praise <laughs> God. So you can read with me. All right. Praise God. First John? Yes, ma'am. 24 through 25. First John 2? Mm-hmm. You don't have to read the scripture, therefore. That's right, read the scripture. Go ahead. Okay, so 1 John 2. 2.24. Yes, ma'am. 2.24. All mm -hmm. right, we got it now, Pastor. Go forward. Okay, okay here we go. Mm -hmm. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye shall also, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. So we have three questions in there. Number one, what is the believer to let abide in him or her? Now we see that in the scripture there, amen? If the believer allows that which he or she has heard from the beginning to remain in them, what will be the result? Mm -hmm. And number three, what is the promise that has been promised to the believer. So then read that again, starting verse 24. All right, 1 John 2, mm -hmm. verse 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. That's very important, and that we're going to continue in the Son and in the Father. Continue. Verse 25, mm -hmm. and this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. Now, let the truth you heard and believe from the beginning. What was that truth? That Jesus is the Christ and let that remain in you. Now, so don't let someone else come and try to talk you out of this. They're, listen, they're called seducing spirit. Mm -hmm. That means if you sit and listen longer, it's something, there is a false anointing on them, but they're very persuasive. Not because of the word, but they can take and do things and twist. You need to understand that the devil has loosed some people that he had been very... Now, you know that Satan is has a seducing spirit. If he can take a third of the angels, Come on. they're in heaven with God. <laughs> And he seduced them to leave God and rebel. So now please understand that that same thing that's on him is on his people that is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. And so there is a lot of them. You're going to see a lot of them. And they're on YouTube. They are trying to convince you. They're trying to do a lot of things. Praise God. We don't need to know a hundred of them. Just stay in the word. That's right. I told you once before when I was in the military, I was in uh, purchasing, but I had it for a period of time to do cashiering for a period of time. When I did that, where I was stationed at in Europe, 
one of the things we had, we had so many different types of monies there, but also we had the American money. A lot of it was old and some of it was new, but there was a lot of counterfeit over there. And so instead of teaching us how to know every counterfeit, come on here. they just showed us the That's original. Good. That's good. <laughs> we studied the original over and over, looked at it and looked at it. So when you saw any counterfeit, come on, come on. you know exactly what it was. <laughs> Praise God. Sweet. You need to study this word. My, my, my. Study the original. Study it till you know it inside out. Pray over it. Read it again. Yes. Amen. So when something comes, the Holy Ghost, you'll be so tender to him. You say, ho, 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 slow up. <laughs> slow your roll right there. Praise God. Something is off here. Praise God. Now show me that again. But you need to know the word of God. Amen. Can I ask a question? You Pastor? can ask a question. All right, because it's Bible study. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, when you, when you start talking about that, uh, I was thinking about the scripture again mm -hmm. over in John 17, 17, mm -hmm. that says uh, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, which that's who we are. Mm -hmm. He says, sanctify them by your truth. Mm -hmm. Thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. Now, if we don't know the word mm -hmm. and somebody come and began to try to talk to us about mm -hmm. Jesus being, you know, just an ordinary man or all of the different things that you just talked about. Unless we know the word. We cannot be sanctified in the truth unless we know what the word of God says Amen. to be true. Amen. Uh, so we have to stop all this stuff about, you know, I know it's somewhere in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, my mama them said it. I, and you know, my grandma said that. Mm -hmm. No, we are going to have to get back to what the word of God says. Because once we know the word, then we can have confidence in Absolutely. what the word of God says. Absolutely. Amen. That's so true. And. This is when people get led away because they don't know the word. Don't know it. Let's not be people who know enough scripture to be dangerous. Let us get the scripture and know the word of God, can talk the word of God. Amen. We don't have to be experts. We don't have to be Bible scholars, but we must study the word right. to show ourselves approved. A workman that needed not to be shamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. When we hear the word is not being rightly divided, then we can stop. Amen. We can say, hold right there. Praise mm -hmm. God. Amen. So it's going to be very, very important. We understand that. Don't give ear and follow false teachers. Second Timothy 4, 3 through 4 said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ear. Now, let them, and, and they shall turn away from, they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fable. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Sometime because of situation, sometime because of family, sometime because of people in our life that we love very much, all that, then we will have empathy or sympathy for them. And we're wanting to believe someone has given us a teaching that will cover you know, what sin they're doing. And so because we want that and because we love them, we want to stand with them. Sometimes more than we want to stand with God, then we can be led by these with the itching ears. Somebody right. said it. Well, I don't know. I, I know a preacher and he, he's a good preacher. And he, that preacher against the word of God is not a good preacher. That's right. I don't care what he, she, her name be. Praise God. <laughs> we need to know that we're going to stay with the word of the Lord. <laughs> Notice that. But, but after their own lust, that means something they desire, something they want. Praise God. And, and they begin to follow that. And the Bible said that they turn to fables. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody come up with some philosophy. Yes, uh, the amen. Take the word of God and say, this is what it means. Pick a scripture here to make the Bible say whatever they wanted to say. Mm -hmm. But the word of the good Lord must be line upon line. Yes, come on. Precept, precept upon precept. Amen. Here a little, there a little. Lord. Praise God. And that's what it has to be. If you can't run that thing throughout the scriptures, yes. Then it's a lie. Amen. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. Come on here. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And so you need to understand that it's like a flower, if you would. Praise God, a flower. When in the morning is it's closed, but everything is in there. But when the sun hit it, it opens up and reveals on, everything tulip. that's in there. Praise God. <laughs> and so, yeah, like a tulip. Praise God. But it's important you understand <laughs> oh, that, here. listen, it's in types and in oh, shadow God. in the Old Testament. But if you're <laughs> diligent and you're willing to search it out, you can run Please. it, praise God, through the scripture. And it'll keep you from getting into error, praise yes. God. You got saints that they don't even want to see the Old Testament. 
But how is it? Praise God. We've been in that Old Testament on Sunday morning. You've been with us. We've been dealing in the Old Testament. Glory We're God. working that book, <laughs> praise God, because it's all about Jesus. Old or new, glory to God. It's all about Jesus. Praise God. It is his story. Praise yes, God. So on. you and I need to get into that word and not be led about and cared about with every uh, kind of doctrine, praise God. And as Sister Anderson said, if you don't know the word, then you can be taught. You can be showed by people who take your Bible yes. and lead you astray with it. All right. Praise God. So it's going to be important that we learn that and know that. Now, we must stay faithful to the truth that we have heard. Otherwise, we cannot continue in intimate relationship with the Father and the Son. So we must stay faithful. He talks about continuing in it. Praise God. And the thing that taught, you got born again. You got born of God's word. Praise God. And now you're going to let somebody come tell you that you weren't saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know you were saved. You know God changed. You know. And now they're going to tell you you're not saved. They're going to try to give you some ritual you got to do. Yeah. Praise God. We were we are born and born again, praise God, by grace, through faith, that not of yourself. If yeah. someone is coming telling you there's something that you got to do to be <laughs> saved, listen, run. Don't walk. Run. Praise God. Get your bag. Put your shoes on. Tie them up. Run. Get out of there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because we're saved by grace. Yes. Amen. Through faith and that not of yourself. It is the, the gift of God. Praise on, God. Man. A gift ain't a gift and you got to earn it. That's Hallelujah. Right. So I'm telling you right now, praise God. Glory. You're saved. Glory to God. And God, so Jesus. listen to this. We got to remain Hallelujah. faithful and and uh, make sure that we're doing what God tells us. John 15, 5 and 6 said, I am the vine. Come on. Ye are the branches. <laughs> He, he that abided body. in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Hallelujah. Can I ask a question? I don't question? see why not. What does it mean when it say abide? Abide means to come in with no intention of getting out. It means to sit down. I ain't going nowhere. I'm not moving. Hallelujah. Kind of like we're doing right now. Yes, abiding in our down. house. Hallelujah. Close the door. Lock it. Hey, praise God. Uh, you knock so on my door. Stay home. <laughs> you knock on my door. You look through the people. How you doing? You know what I'm saying? You got to keep moving. I'm just saying. Yes, thank you, Lord. Abide in him. Praise Glory God. Don't be God. in and out. Don't be up and out. Praise God. You got to make up your mind. You have to commit to the word of God. God, to the things of God. And see, again, what the people hoping to do, the Antichrist, the people that are leading us astray, is they hope to govern you by your feelings. And you and I cannot be governed right. by our feelings. We cannot uh, uh, take the word of God and determine if the word of God is true by how we feel. Really? So we have to allow the word to judge our feeling and not our feeling judge the word. Praise God. Oh, well, this is how I feel. You need to get over that feeling. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> praise God. If it's contrary to God's word, you want to get it. You need to bring that thing back in line with the word of cast down imagination. Glory. Every Glory. high Glory. thing that exalts itself against yes. the knowledge. So if that word you yes. got Come on. exalt itself against what God said, don't think on it a nanosecond. Praise God. Cast that thought down. Amen. Praise God. And because the word of God is coming to destroy them strongholds in us, our wrong behaviors, our wrong Glory thought life. I mean, the word of God is going to contend with that. Praise God. And the more you know, it's not that God knows that we're not perfect. But what we have to do is when the Holy Spirit convicts us, learn not to go a week before you repent. Come on, come on. Do it right away. Hallelujah. You, you didn't shock God when you messed up. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. He already knew. Praise Glory. God. Amen. Tell the truth on yourself. <laughs> Glory to God. Say, Lord, I messed that up. Lord, I, my behavior was wrong. Yeah. Lord, I said the wrong thing. Now, somebody else said that they might never say nothing, but that's all right. See, because God give more grace to the humble. Come on. I want you to know that he reveals his secrets <laughs> to the humble. The folk be walking around with pride, head all up. God resists the proud folk. Yes, he said it. Amen. Don't want to say I'm sorry. Don't want to say I was wrong. Listen, that, that shows your spirit is not in line with the fruit of the spirit. Praise God. And it's important that you and I understand we stay sensitive. Our hearts stay pliable mm. to God. And God will not allow the enemy then to lead us astray. Glory to God. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Amen. Glory. Glory. Amen. Go back and read that 25th verse one more time. 25th verse where? <laughs> first, Timothy, first John 2, 
25, I believe it was. Praise God. Yeah, read the 25th verse again. Because there's a promise that go with that. And I just want to touch that for a moment. And then we'll go on. First Praise. John 2, verse uh, 25, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. glory to God. Praise God. Now that word says, and this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal, eternal life. life. So that's the thing. The eternal life is worth all that we're willing to go mm -hmm. through for God. The suffering that you and I may go through, the things that we're called, and sometimes when you stand for the word of God, you're going to stand by yourself. Yeah. When you stand in the word of God, like if people will abuse you, take uh, 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 vices over you, praise God. Now, we're not talking about physical abuse. Now, I'm just talking about the way they talk to you, those things, praise God. The Bible said when they rail against Jesus, he Ooh. committed himself to the Father, amen, who would judge righteously, Righteous. praise God. And you know what? Again, I've told you this once before, but it's very true. Sometimes people say stuff that us, we act like it's true. We're ready to fight, ready to throw down, <laughs> praise God. But, but my father taught me a lesson many years ago. We was at a Lake County Fair. Praise God. And I've told him many times, but somebody hadn't heard it. So y'all leave me alone. <laughs> so now <laughs> uh, I'm looking through the screen on somebody. I said, so Pastor, I heard that one. That's all right. At least it's time. Somebody ain't heard it. Praise <laughs> God. But we walking through the county fair and these the people are always trying to get your attention. We really didn't have that much money, but it was just a joy for us to go with our father just to walk through the place, see all the rides, see all the people. But this gentleman called him, my father was tall and he was slim at that time. And he said, hey, slim. And then my father just kept walking. So I, I said, Daddy, Daddy, that man's talking to you. And my father said, no, he's not. Come on here. My name is not Slim. <laughs> so, so my father didn't act like he had called him by the right name. That's right. Sometimes, sometimes we have it. People say stuff, we act like it's true. <laughs> We're ready to fight. We're ready to do that. Praise God. Listen, let's Ooh. don't wear our motion on our sleeve. Amen. Come, somebody can't and send nothing to you probably because you take it the wrong way. Amen. The Bible says, soon the best. That's right. And it, it, listen, well, they weren't talking about, it. hey, you still good. You ain't upset. <laughs> you live longer. Praise God. Your immune system will be stronger. Come on, here. Come on now. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. He's promised us eternal life. This thing is worth running for. Amen. Run with all your might for him. Ooh. To bring glory and honor to him. All right. Praise God. I hope y'all send me some of y'all answers over here because I am curious to see them. Praise God. God bless you. All right. Let's go to one verse. Verse 26. Sister Henderson, would you read that one for us too? That's in the same verse, John 2. Yes, it All is. Right. Praise God. Here we go, y'all. We're going to that. Praise God. First John 2, verse 26. Mm -hmm. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Praise God. He said, I'm writing because I'm concerned. There's some folks out there seducing you. You and I know people. We, we got sometimes family members. We got, and they come up with some of the weirdest stuff. We like, where they wow. get that from? And uh, I've had some of you talk to me about it in the past, you know, and, and, and we understand that because they're going and getting, sitting on the wrong thing and doing things. Listen to me. He said, I'm writing this concerning them that seduce you. He was concerned for them because they're getting on some bad teaching, wrong teaching, and this was to lead them astray. Praise yeah. God. So uh, the two questions there is, what was the main reason? I'm sorry. Yeah, what was the main reason for John's writing? Well, again, because he was writing concerning them that was seducing them. And then we said, define seduce. Praise God. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Go on and look at it. my notes here. First of all, seduce. The Greek word is plenio. It, it means to cause to go astray, to seduce, and look at this, to wonder. To wonder. Have you seen some of these young folks, Wee. some of these older folks who have been led astray? They're wondering. They got a look in their eyes that's very disconcerting. And you see them and you, you, your heart goes out to yeah. them because you know that they believe it and, and they're wondering and, and they don't know and praise God. And so... When we are not allowed, it seduce and lead it astray, but there's no, our, our hope is not built on a solid foundation now. Mm -hmm. And we can't have the peace of Christ unless we walk in with Christ. And so it's going to be very, very important that you and I understand this. Praise God. They're seducing. If Satan can't stop us from worshiping the true God, Come on. he seeks to cause us to worship a false God. Wee. Amen. If Satan can't stop you, he's going to just try to lead you astray. Mm -mm -mm. He can see that you love God, that you want to please God. And so, look, I can't stop him. But if I just get him off, if I can get her a off bit. a little bit, I can just get her moved. Just a little. You start just a little bit off, but you're in the way over in another place. And it's very important that you understand 
we God word is truth to me. Mm. Amen. I'm going to stay with that word. With Amen. It. Because I don't want to be seduced. So you and I need to make sure that we're staying on God's word. We're staying in fellowship with him. And praise God with the saints as well. First Timothy 4 and 1 said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly mm -hmm. that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devil. Oui. Let me read it again. First Timothy 4 and 1. Now the spirit speaking expressly that in the latter time is there's anybody got any question that we're in the latter times. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed, listening to, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. What dark teaching of devils comes straight out of the pits of hell. Spate uh, straight out of Satan himself. It, and Satan, no, he, he's wise enough to put enough truth in there, but he slips a little error just to lead you off. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. No, you got they, they, just someone got a big drink, neither, but they put just enough strychnine in there. Whee! It won't kill you right away. But in the end, it's going to make you sick. And if not changed, of course, you'll die. Satan wants to lead you and I astray mm -hmm. in these last days. But you need to say, not me. Praise God. Not Can you me. say this? Say not, not me. me. Hallelujah. Glory to Pray God. God. Hallelujah. <laughs> not going to be me. Praise not God. Me. Amen. I'm going to stay on the word. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, I'm going to stand on Jesus. Amen. Well, let's look Can at... Can I read that scripture, Pastor? I don't see why not. I want to read that First Timothy 4, uh, verse 1. And I want to read 2 as well. Okay. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. Go right ahead. Because in my study, I, I came across this. It says, now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly mm -hmm. that in the last times, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. These people are hypocrites and liars, and their conscience are dead. Wow. I'm telling you, that makes it plain for me. It, it's, it's really true. Uh, what happens is we have somebody, look, you know what? We can go to get counseling from three or four different people. But the ones say what we want them to say. Oui. What we want to do anyway, that, that's a seducing spirit. That's, my ears is itching to hear what I want to hear. Not the mm -hmm. truth. Praise God. See, your friends will tell you what you want to hear. But your mentor will tell you the truth. <laughs> Come on here. Come on, rise up, mentors. We don't want the truth. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. And so, you know what? We need friends. But you need to know when God has given you a mentor. Yes, come on. Because that person is to help you to reach what God has called you Glory to reach. Glory to God. Hallelujah to God. And so, you know, thank God for friends. They will encourage you. Praise God. But many times, the mentor are going to tell you something. Yes, come on. And when they tell you that... <laughs> They can't tell you nothing else. I love you enough that I'm going to tell you tell the truth. truth. Praise God. And, and I know that it might hurt you. But because I love you, I got to tell you. My conscience got to be clear. That last phrase she said, and their conscience are dead. Mm -hmm. I, they can look you in your eye and lie. Don't blink an eyelid. <laughs> you understand? You, you got to know that in these last days, <laughs> we need people of truth. Praise God. Ooh. To tell the truth. Living the truth. <laughs> And more than that, watch what they're living. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, don't go to somebody ain't living something right. They can't preach it. Amen. If I'm an adulterer, I'm not going to preach on adultery. You better say it. Why should I preach on adultery? I'm going to condemn myself and pull, my face will give me away. My body <laughs> language is going to give me away. Praise God. If I'm a cheater, praise God. If, if, if I'm one that believes you don't have to be faithful to your wife, praise God. <laughs> Amen. You understand? I'm going to preach. Well, you know, these wives and stuff like that. Huh? What did they say about Job? <laughs> huh? He got rid of that old wife, pray God. Listen to me. He got rid of that husband. You and I got to come to a place that we understand. Pray God. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with these religious folk. You need to go out there and enjoy yourself a little bit. Uh, you know, just, you my, go to club, just my, don't my. drink. Pray God. Pray. You go there and you win some folk to cry. Them folk gonna win you unless Jesus <laughs> sent you in there. You better get up out of there. Praise God. You, you need to understand that we cannot be, um, we shouldn't be, I'm sorry, seduced by these spirits. That's that thing about Paul saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Come on here. Praise <laughs> God. 
Paul said it. Paul said, you know my manner of life. Now, you've been long enough to see me walk with God. You've been enough to see. You see God has blessed my life. You see that, praise God, I'm consistent. I'm living the life of Christ. I have the peace of God. Amen. In my life. Every time you see me, it's the same. Praise God, I don't have to because he's stable. I'm in him. Praise God. I'm not trusting in myself. Lord knows if I was trusting myself, I'd be a wretch. You hear me? But my hope is in God. And so Paul said, you see me, you know my doctrine, mm -hmm. you see my manner of life, praise God. And so that's what we have to do as leaders, every one of us. And Jesus said it also in John 10, you know, it was my, doing my study time mm -hmm. uh, that I came across. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Come on, come Glory on. Glory to God. Yeah. And I know them, and not only that, they follow me. They follow me. <laughs> Praise God. They ain't following Jesus. Come they ain't on, come on. Ain't none of their sheep. Pray to God. There's some stragglers in there. Hallelujah. Goats. I mean, go ahead, go ahead. Go and ahead. that's why we talked about last week. That they, they were left us so they can be manifested. Yeah. Praise God. You started preaching the truth. You, I told you last time, amen, that the bread would determine the children. Come Praise on, God. Hallelujah. On. You preach the right word. There's some folk going to leave. Don't, don't get upset. I'm not talking about you trying to be abusive or nothing. But when you preach the truth, some people are not going to be able to deal with yeah. that because they're not ready to make a change. They're not ready to do that. Praise God. That's too much for me. But see, you and I got to fall on the rock before the rock mm -hmm. fall on us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is the rock. You Glory fall on the rock, you you're skin your knee. Praise God. <laughs> but don't let the rock fall on you. It's, it's not going to be fun. Hallelujah to God. Well, skin your knee. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, We're having too much fun tonight. That's the word tonight. <laughs> Better get that knee skin. But anyway, come on, praise God. Let's do the very last one, 27 through 29. Sister, Henry, would you read it? Reading First John it. 2. First John 2. 27 through 29. Give me one minute. Let me get ready. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah to God. Praise First God. First John 2. Yeah. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Can we get it again? All right. Praise okay. God. <laughs> All right. Uh, verses 27. Uh, yes, through 29. Through 29. Mm -hmm. But the anointing. Which ye have received of him mm -hmm. abideth in you. Praise God. And ye need not that any man teach you, mm -hmm. but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness mm -hmm. is born of him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise. That's a good word right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Now, here's the questions there, and then I'm going to try to close this out. Uh, what abides in the believer? Why is it that the believer does not need anyone to teach them? Does this mean that we don't need the fivefold leaders to instruct us? Why or why not? What is the requirement to maintain the anointing which the believer has received? What will cause the believer to have confidence? And finally, when is this confidence needed? Praise God. Now, John is not telling them that they don't need anointed leaders That's right. to to uh, not to instruct them. The Bible said in Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some apostles and prophets mm -hmm. and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Yes. Amen. And so he's not telling them. It, that's very obvious that because then it would be contrary to uh, the scripture script he has told us. He said that in Hebrews 13 and 7, remember them who have the rule, rule over, over you, you, who has spoken unto you the word of God. Amen. And so it's very important, praise God. We need to be somewhere where the word of God is being spoken to us, is being taught to us, amen. That's one of the reasons for me, when I'm teaching, I'm constantly giving you the scriptures because That's I right. need you to study this for yourself, to know it for yourself, not because pastor said it, but because the word of the Lord said That's it, right. praise That's God, right. amen. And so praise God, you want someone going to teach the word to you constantly, not open the Bible, read a script and close it, don't go back to it. That's not someone who's giving you the word of God. Many times it's a lot of philosophy, unless they have the scriptures written down and quote, and that's very good. Praise God, no problem at all. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 7 say, and all of these are parts of it. I'm not giving the reading the whole of script. These in part. 
It says, obey them who have the rule over, over you, you and submit yourselves. That's Hebrews 13, 7. It goes on also, and follow their faith, mm -hmm. considering the end of their conversation or their lifestyle. Amen? And so God's not asked you to follow anybody that when you look at their life, is all tore up. It's raggedy. Praise God. Amen. You know, if, if I'm not living this, if my life is tore up, you know, and if, if me and my wife tore up, praise God, I don't blame anybody for not following That's us. That's right. Amen. That's a thing. I'm sitting there preaching the word to you, but obviously the power of it doesn't reach my own life. So I want to be able to lead. And for all of our leaders, that's one of the most important things to do. Mm -hmm. Leaders lead. Yes. And that's what we should do. If we're going to say we're leaders, praise God, let's lead by example, praise God. And and uh, we need to understand at times, praise God, situation may be going on. If something going on at home or, or uh, something may be going on with Sister Henderson, I need to take time to deal with that. Praise God, I don't have a problem. I would come and say, listen, I, I got my first ministry is at home. Come on here. Yeah. And I need to take care of some issues Good. going on with my family, with my wife. And so praise God. Uh, brother, I need y'all to hit the pulpit. And y'all, for the next month, let me see if I can get this worked out. Because that's my first ministry, praise God. And it's not right for me to stand in the pulpit, nor my house is tore up. Yes, and I'm on. just constantly there and I'm not ministering there. Praise God. It, it's, it's incumbent upon us, praise God, to follow those considering the end of their conversation. conversation. Amen. Now, I'm not responsible for somebody else's house. Praise right. God. I'm responsible for where I live at here. Praise God. I'm the head of this home and I'm responsible. That's right. Praise God. I need to lead by example for my wife, for my family. Praise God. Here. I'm not responsible for somebody else's house. This is what I need to do. And so at the same time, walking in righteousness assures our hearts before God. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have confidence before God if we know we're walking in sin, if we're walking in total disobedience. We, how can we have confidence in God? Praise God. We mm -hmm. can't do it. Praise God. And it can set terrible example to our children. Yes. Amen. They're telling us, we're talking to them about the Lord and how important. And our children see us at home ain't living for God. <laughs> Amen. They they know what we're doing. Praise God. We're... They see us up there preaching, singing, <laughs> praise God. And they get home, they're like, please. please. You know, they can't even receive it from us. Praise <laughs> God. And you know what? We shouldn't do that. Not because we're perfect. They know that we're not perfect. We are not. There's, there's not no perfect people. But we need to do that. I want her to re re read, the, close these out just one more time, and then we're going to be done for the night. So I'm reading the last scriptures back. Yeah, yeah, one more time. Yeah, Praise okay. God. This is where we close it out. Verse I, I 22. Might yes. Verse 27. Yes, ma'am. 29. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Now that word anointing again is the same one that it was said unction up there before. And that anointing abides with you. When you got born again, the spirit of the living God came to live oh, on the inside of you. Praise God. Now, and the Bible said that the Holy Spirit came. Amen. He's our teacher. He will lead you and guide you in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. He will call back to remember the thing that he's told you. He will instruct you in the way. And the Holy Spirit is there. He's there. You have that anointing in you. Say, I have that anointing. I have that anointing in me. There's an anointing Glory in you. To Praise God. God. If you're born again, it yes. dwells there. All yes. right. Continue. Uh, and you need not that any man teach you. You need not anybody to tell you about Jesus, who he was. You accepted him. You made him the Lord of your life. Praise God. And you don't need somebody to come trying to tell you about a different Jesus. Amen. That anointing will not agree with that is right. in you. That anointing will say, nope, this is not true. Praise God. Because again, the Holy Spirit is there to glorify Jesus. Amen. As the son of God, as the oh, promised Messiah, oh. he's there. And if you and I are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, We'll, he will let us know. Our peace will be disturbed right there. Hey, That's hey, right. something wrong here. Praise God. And something is out of alignment with the kingdom of God right now. And you and I need to know we need to step away. All right, continue. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now, anointing there will confirm the truth to you. When the word of God is being preached, the Holy Spirit is saying, yes. yes. He's agreeing with that. And that's when you and I get happy. Woo, glory. You know, we, very God, something went off in me. Hallelujah. You know, I'm excited. And then we start bagging it up. Praise God. Crying tears. Because the Holy Spirit is confirming that truth. Hallelujah. You, and he's there to, uh, 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 if you will, testify. This is true. Yes. And that's why you need to know. Otherwise, we'll get in our head. Mm -hmm. 
And there, so he's there to testify. Go ahead, Sister Sandra. Verse 28 in 1 John 2 says, mm -hmm. And now little children abide in him, mm -hmm. that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. You, I was in the military in Germany, and I had a dream. And in that dream, I was at what was called the Bahnhof, which is in German, that would be the train station. I was there at the Bahnhof in this dream, and there's a crowd there, and we were waiting for Jesus. To come to buy. It had been told Jesus was coming on the train. And I remember this, and, and it was so vivid. We were all waiting. People was excited, and the train started coming. And it was coming, and it got there, and the door was getting ready to open, and I felt ashamed because I know I had some unconfessed sin. And, and I was ashamed because, and I didn't want to see Jesus because I knew he would look at me and he would know that I had not told the truth. I had not stood in the truth. And, you know, and I woke up and I was sweating and I repented. And I said, Lord, I repent of that. I turn from that now in the name of Jesus. See, I was ashamed at his appearing. Yeah. You don't want to be ashamed at his appearing. That's right. Last verse, please. Verse 29. And if you know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. If the person is living for God, they can't do it on their own. They cannot live righteous on their mm -hmm. own. Amen. Because we can only do that with the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to judge people, but we can judge their fruit. Yes. We can look at their fruit and determine what's at the root in them. Praise God. And that's why it's important for us that the world sees us, that our children sees us, the law sees us, that they see consistency in us. Yeah. Because anybody can be good and talk nice, and, but when things started going, they, they turn into a different person. That's not the fruit of the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes all of us will get off. It sure will. But there need to be some, <laughs> some consistency in us. You know, they, people should be shocked that we went off. They'd be shocked that we started really. If they're not shocked, that tells you that they see that all the time. And so please understand that the righteous will do righteousness. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's all I have to give you tonight. Praise God. I, I, I'm done. Susan, do you got anything else? I right after you give a salvation call. All and right. I'm going to finish it up over on this side. Okay, you done over there until, until uh, I do this? I meant on the lesson. Did you have anything? I'm done on the lesson. Okay. Praise Amen. God. Well, Good teaching, Pastor. Uh -huh, praise God. <laughs> Listen to me. Now, maybe you've been following a wrong Jesus or a wrong teaching. Tonight, you need to be born again. Yes. You need to have the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one mm -hmm. who loved you so much that he died on the Lord, cross for you. Lord. All other religions, you have to die for their God. Mm -mm -mm. But in this one, our God died for us. Thank you. Thank you. Lord. God sent forth his only son, Jesus, to pay the full price for all of your sin, all of my sin. Mm -hmm. He suffered on that cross so he could pay all of your sin. And today, to this evening, all you need to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart. Glory. To agree with him that you are lost, that you are a sinner, and you are in need of a Savior. And that he will save you tonight. Mm -hmm. But not just to be your Savior, to be the Lord of your life. So that he will guide and direct your life and lead you into the mm -hmm. thing that God brought you on this planet to do. I wonder tonight if you know him. Awesome. Have you made him the Lord of your life? Are you willing tonight to say, Lord, I've run my life the best I knew how. And I've made too many mistakes. I've run it into a terrible place. But tonight, I'm willing to give you the opportunity to take this life. Yes. And if you can take my life and make it me what I should be, I'll serve you the rest of my days. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That he died on the cross, paid the full price for your sin. That he was buried. He rose again from the dead. And that now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. If you believe that. If you're willing to receive him tonight, I just want to pray with you that you will accept him. You can pray something like this. Yes. Father, tonight, I agree with you that I'm in need of a Savior. And I understand that Jesus died on the cross to pay the full price for all of my sin, past, present, and future. 
that if I would receive him as Lord of my life, that you would, Jesus, would come into my life this very night and make me a son of God. Thank you, he will save me, deliver me, and my name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. And I will dwell with you forever and ever and ever throughout eternity. So tonight I invite you, Jesus, please come into my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior this yes. night. And I declare that I'm born again and I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer tonight, I want to welcome you yes. to the yes. family of God. You are born again. Come on here. You need to go let somebody know that you made mm -hmm. this tonight. You made that decision tonight. They may laugh at you. They may not agree with you. Don't you concern yourself with that. This is between you and the Lord. Glory now, if you God. made that decision, Sister Henderson is going to give you some instruction, and we would like for you to do to be able to assist you and help you. Sister Henderson. Amen. I, I just declare this tonight that somebody has given their life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, every time we gather, somebody has given their life to the Lord, and we believe that tonight will be no different. Amen. Amen. And so if that is you, if you would send me over our, our email uh, to info, I-N-F-O, at BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org. Again, info, I-N-F-O, at BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org. Or you can call the ministry, area code of 414-873-8687. And there's a lot of extensions out there. They're either one of them that you, uh, you know, come into, we will be able to get back to you. And we want to send you some material. I want to see you walk in this new journey called salvation. Uh, I just thank the Lord for you right now that uh, you've given your life to the Amen. Lord. Praise and we God. bless the Lord for uh, you becoming a part of the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to again, just uh, for uh, those of us that are going to be on Facebook Live, uh, the live stream on Sunday, again, we're going to be celebrating together the communion um, together. So come with your commun communion. And we're going to break that bread and drink of that cup together. Amen. And it's also Resurrection Sunday. What a tremendous Amen. opportunity Hallelujah. that we will have together Praise to be God. able to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be on the call tomorrow or either Friday, uh, again, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., and I am challenging you to be on the t call on time. We're going to start on time, but that way to keep us from going over and over again, uh, given the in instructions and the directives. So if you could get on the call about 5 to 5, hey, make it a, a great day and go and get them up and do that. Again, that number is area code 701-801-1211. And then the access code is 486-979-364-POUND. Again, if you didn't get that, send us over an email to info at BerenFamilyWorshipCenter.org or either you can uh, call the ministry again 414-873-8687 uh, before we receive the blessing I want to just again to encourage you to please stay focused uh, stay alert stay safe and probably of all of that stay at home amen stay at home and do what it is that uh, right now that they are asking us to do stay at home and stay in prayer first Thessalonians 5 17 say pray without season mm -hmm. night and day day and night we don't just end with a song pastor anyway right hand no up. no we're not <laughs> father we bless you father we thank you so much for your kindness to us glory to god for allowing us to gather one more time father we pray blessings upon those who are participating in this on their homes, Thank their family. You, and Father, we declare your health and healing and virtue flows through their body in the Lord mighty name of Jesus. God. We pray, keep us safe. Help us to make right and God-honoring decisions. And we bless you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We God love bless you. you. We love, love you. you guys. Have Come a great on. evening. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. God <laughs> bless you.